first book I published, Relationship Red Flags. If you've not gotten yours, you can get it in hard copy and soft copy or in audio format. All right. To do that, please, you can check the link in my bio or go on seller and type Relationship Red Flags or go on Amazon and type Relationship Red Flags or my name and my different books out there will come up. Okay, so we are, we're looking at this one, and um, it's a very important conversation. All right, so red flags, red flags. See, I can, I, can have, I can have my entire session for the year talking about relationship red flags, and it won't be too much. Let me say that again. I can talk about red flags in a relationship or in relationships. I can talk about it for the full year and I won't be talking about it too much. One reason is that it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing for people to accept it, right? Um, I don't want to say understand because many times it's not that they don't understand. But people identify red flags but sometimes are what's the word they're overpowered by the by their emotions or rather because their emotional strength is weak they are unable to take logical decisions when they see the signs okay so talking about this thing over and over again it will help people like that to get to that point where They've heard it too much that now they have built emotional resilience or strength rather to take the decisions that they need to take. Okay, um, so it's, it's a very pertinent conversation. For singles, we will talk about red flags for a long time. You know, in the broadcast I sent out today, there was a quote I referenced which was said that the same red flags that you ignore at the beginning may be the very reasons why that relationship or marriage fails. Those same things you ignore at the beginning might be the cause for the end of it. And that is the... All right, so let's, let's talk about it. Let's, um, I, have, I, have, I have the e-copy in front of me, but you know sometimes it's just sweet to flip the pages. So I'm flipping the pages from my book. And today we're looking at red flags, four, five, six. Um, let me see if I'll take some more. So... According to this book, well, the way I did this book was I talked about the red flags for guys and the red flags for ladies. All right. Uh, so I'm in the section for the guys. Maybe I'll take three from here and three from the ladies section. All right. We'll touch this one more time. Um, okay. I guess that's much. No, no, Hala. I guess that's much. Thank you, bro. Okay. So I'll touch this one more time next week by God's grace. And then we will do our banter on the 29th of November. Okay. Now that said, um, I'll, I'll encourage you to please get this book get this book one because the information in it is useful is relevant for you and for somebody you know also because you'll be encouraging me all right by doing that so please um get it you can get it online it's very cheap very affordable audio version 1k ebook i think 2k hard copy like 3k cost of production is very expensive you know all right so real converse with Kinesta, you're welcome ah we should we should we should talk hmm? We should talk real convos. Um, I mean, we should do this kind of thing. <laughs> All right, so um, one of the red flags you should look out for in a guy, if you're a lady, is if he refuses to define the relationship or make it official. He refuses to define it or make it official. Um, so many times this happens where it starts out as a situationship right um you guys maybe were introduced to each other by a mutual friend you met at an event you kind of you are tripping for each other low-key you know um on the feel on ourselves you know you know when you're out in an occasion you put up best behavior now you put up i mean i mean you're looking good you're looking tight you're making sure i mean your perfume is on point and all of that you know and then um so you meet a member of the opposite gender and then you guys are really looking good for each other so you're feeling yourselves and then for you know you guys start talking um and you guys really connect um somehow you keep talking you go on a date you go on another date you're visiting at his house um 
you know, um, you guys are hugging and hugging a little longer and putting a peck on the cheek and putting a kiss on the lips. And then before you know, you guys go full blown romance and then maybe you guys get sexually involved, you know. And all of this was just happenstance, right? Feelings were just great and you guys were just, without necessarily talking about it, right? Let me tell you the truth. As a guy, man, brother loves that. Don't talk about it. Don't bring in no commitment here. Let's just continue like this. We're good and fine. All right. But many times this happens the first time, the second time, the third time. Perhaps lady is thinking that, oh, he's a cool guy. He looks like he's serious. Um, maybe if I give in a little bit more, um, he will get to that point where he tells me that he wants to get married to me or he really loves me or um, everything he wants, you know, um, and then she's waiting for a while. He hasn't said anything like that. He hasn't made, he hasn't brought up the conversation. He just enjoys telling you to come over. You know, he tells you to come over and you really come over and you guys have a cool night together, spend the weekend together, you know. And then one day, you know, it gets to that point where she always brings up this conversation like, um, yeah, this thing that's going on between us, like, um, you know, she might pass through the corners and ask him, like, um, how come you don't have a girlfriend? I mean, a cute guy like you, you're a rich guy, you're doing well, why, why don't you have a girlfriend? And then he tells you one of those stories, very touching stories. Oh my God, you know, the last girlfriend I had, you know, I wanted to get married to her, you know, um, she broke my heart, you know, she ran off with my best friend. Oh my God, oh, you know, you know, say, ah, Lady Sha, ah, this girl, ah, could she do that? You know, you not be feeling for him, you know, say, ah, it's true, maybe he needs the emotional support. In your mind, you are that one that has come now. Ha, ah, format, Sha. Now, <laughs> you see she's asking all of these questions because she wants to find out what's up with us like where are we going with this like yeah i come over chill with you we have sex we're cool together i cook for you we're doing stuff together you know and it's looking like it's making sense from her own point of view but gaiman is not saying anything hey chinere it's good to see you i'm so excited to see you here. welcome linda i see you too kina i see you chucky i see you guys all right, um, and it's a Williams. Uh, let me just be hailing all my people. I see all, I see all you guys, and I'm really excited to have you guys here. Mm -hmm. um, let me put off my notifications so that it doesn't get into the recording. All right, so I was saying that many times people stumble into this situationship, and then at some point, lady is expecting guy to define it, and he's not saying anything. The reason he's not saying anything is because that is exactly where he wants it to be. If he wanted something more, he would have told you. No, but he doesn't want anything more. He's comfortable the way it is right now. We're just cool like that. We just have an understanding. Yeah, she comes over once in a while. But, but yeah, we're not dating. Yeah, we're not dating. But you guys are getting down, man. All right? And what guys don't really know sometimes, or what maybe they don't care about, is that for the lady, it's not just cool. She wants security. She wants to know where is this going. I mean, she's of age to get married and she's hoping that this cool guy is somebody... I mean, every conversation you're having with her, she's actually checking you out for marriage. She's actually checking, okay, okay, what about this, what about that? She gets to your house, she's already imagining what she can do and how she can transform the house and organize it. You know, she's already seen herself as that wife. But Gaiman is not saying anything. That is a red flag. And then you bring it up as a conversation with him, like, okay, so um, what's up with us? You know, we've been cool for like three months now. You know, what are your plans for marriage? Um, uh, why did I avoid the real question? The real question is, what are we? You know that question. So, so, so what are we? You know, and um, we always like to answer that we are nothing but pencil in the hands of the creator. Thanks to Wale Adeduga. <laughs> All right. But, you know, so she brings up that question of what are we? But Gaiman avoids it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I really like you. I, I, I really like you. And then he says a number of other nice things that go here and there. But you know that you haven't found the answer to the question you're asking him. What's happening? He's avoiding the place where he has to define that relationship that both of you have. And if you're finding this with your guy, don't think that the solution to it is to stay longer. Maybe he will get to that point where I will please him to that point or where he will so believe me to the point that he will now bring up the marriage conversation. No, he will not. If he wanted it, he would have brought it up. Let me tell you something. Guys are not that confused. Especially when they meet a lady they are convinced that they want to get married to. They are not that confused. No, they are not that confused. Man, that, 
That somebody tells you I'm really my mind is just clouded right now. I'm confused. He's not confused. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's not. When he sees what he really wants, he goes after it. You know. So if he's not, if he's avoiding the conversation to define what exactly is going on between you two, that is a big red flag. And then he excuses it with, "Let's just see how it goes." No, no, no. Are you the one that someone is going to experiment with? Are you kidding me? Lady, you got to guard your heart. You have to protect your heart. No. Let's see how what goes. No, 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 no. What exactly are we doing? Let's know from the beginning. All right? Some ladies say, okay, you know, I don't want it to look like I'm, so, I'm too desperate, so I don't want to bring up the marriage conversation. And sometimes when I hear that, I, I kind of laugh because what, what do you mean by too desperate? You're already of age to get married. There's no desperation here. It's a conversation you should have or not have. But you should have it, actually. If there's nothing like, of, um, look like I'm desperate. No, 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 that's not the case. You need to know so that you know what you're doing here. You can't be playing with your emotions. Do you understand? So, yes, it's okay to have that conversation from the beginning. Hey, guy, alpha, alpha, gently. Why are you calling me money after the night, sending me gifts and flowers in my office? What's going on? What are your plans? Because at the end of the day, this guy, man, that will break your heart later and tell you, yeah, but I never told her we were dating. I never told her I loved her. I never told her I wanted to get married to her. You don't say, but you're sending her flowers. You say, yes, I did that to my female friends. Wahala. He will disclaim you once. And then you now you now look like you were the one who was just caught in assumption. Or no, 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 my dear. Get it clear. What is this that we are doing? And where is it taking us to? More so, don't even indulge that level of emotional and physical gratification you know until you are sure where this conversation is going if not if you leave guy man once he's getting the goods there's no need for any extra commitment man i just like it like that and we're just fine like that i hope somebody gets what i'm saying all right so please let me move on to the next point if he's avoiding defining that relationship then it's a red flag most likely he's not ready to define it He's not ready to take it the next level with you. Don't think that by waiting longer, he will get to that point. No, it's not you who will make him get there. Most like most times, he will get there by himself. Yes, I know there are people who will say, yeah, you know, when we started dating, he was a playboy, he wasn't serious. But when I wanted to leave him, he now said, oh, no more. Ah, I don't want to lose you. He now retired from playboy or uh, something. Okay. You ought to play that experiment, ba? No wahala. No wahala few weeks inside the marriage then original playboy vibes come back up you know so you don't you don't want to be the one that somebody's experimenting with really let me move on point is if he's avoiding um if he refuses to define the relationship or make it official with you it's a red flag and the solution is not to wait longer maybe in the future he will catch up with it no leave him when he catches up with that and he has decided what he wants let him come back if you are still available and if you are still waiting for him if you are still considering him all right if he refuses to define the relationship please many times it's because he's not thinking that seriously about you no when a guy sees a lady that he wants you know what he does he personalizes you in fact you begin to see overprotection who is that guy you're talking with i'm not saying that that's good but i mean he's looking out for you he's wondering like hey I'm seeing you around a lot of guys too much. What is going on? Is how all your friends are just guys? What's happening when he's doing that? He's trying to personalize you. He's trying to tell you, hey, you are mine. I'm not comfortable with you, with, with all of these people. Like, how far now? You know, he's trying to personalize you. So if he's not doing that, if he's not defining it with you, then what are you still doing there? Let me move on to the next point, all right? Um, where am I? Okay, um... Let me move on to the next point. The next point is, uh uh-huh, similar to this point. If he keeps avoiding the marriage conversation, it's a very important red flag to pay pay attention to, yeah. You bring up marriage conversation, he deflects it. You bring it up, he deflects it again. You bring it up, he deflects it again. Um, He's not ready to have that conversation. It's almost the same thing as not willing to define that relationship with you. Okay, please, ladies, you are you're not you're not supposed to be for anybody's experiment. If within the first few conversations he is not sounding like, um, like he wants something serious with you, keep it at that level. Don't 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 give your emotions in already. You know, 
Don't be the one following up every day, every day, morning, afternoon. I'm, you know, you want to be with him. Well, you know, okay, I'm coming to meet you. I bought you this. I did no, no, no. Take it easy. Take it easy. If he wants you, let him come after you. All right. If not, keep it at conversation level. All right. And I mean, not calling him all the time. Give him the opportunity to look for you. Let him call you. Do you understand? Now, this thing I'm saying, right? I know that there are some guys who don't know how to call. It's you that will teach them, right? But uh, if you are convinced that this is that kind of person that will catch up with time, then after calling him for a bit, you now suggest to him that, oh, God, it's not cool that I'm just calling you. What's happening? Am I disturbing you? It seems um, you don't want me in your space, so I'm, I'm going to stop calling you. I'm going to leave you. All right? If he gets the message, then he will pick up and start reaching out to you. Why? Because he really treasures and values your, your, your friendship. Do you understand? Okay? So, but my point is, don't go out there throwing yourself on the man and forcing him to now uh, agree to, to get in a relationship with you or get married to you. You know, don't do that. Allow him want you. Allow him come for you. All right? So, if he's avoiding the conversations about marriage, please, he is not ready to get married. No, he's not ready. He's not ready. You know, and I tell people to, to bring up this conversation sometimes. Bring it up with him. Bring it up. Ask him, what are your plans for marriage? When do you want to get married? You'll be surprised at you that you are planning to get married in your mind. It should not pass this year, December, or last, or next year. You'll be surprised you talk to this guy, man, and he tells you, like, um, well, the way I'm seeing it, um, uh, I want to apply for PR, and I don't know when it to come out. Uh, when it come out, I'm going to do my uh, master's. Um, uh, so after my master's, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a PhD. Uh, it's how this one says. I've not talked about marriage. So when... <coughs> When, where are you in his future? You, you don't, you're not there. You don't exist. All right? You are, you are there for the now, for the enjoyment of now. Do you understand? So by the time you bring up that kind of conversation, and he's not saying anything definitive about a future with you. He's not telling you that, okay, even though I want to go out for my master's or doctorate or something, um, but immediately I get in there, the next thing I want to do is arrange for you to come over um, and let's get married. If he's not saying that, that means you are not in his immediate future. All right? He's not thinking about getting married to you. So there's no point waiting and hoping that, oh, he will change his mind. No. You know, I say this thing a number of times, and some people don't really care what I'm saying. A guy is not confused about the lady he wants to get married to when he sees her. He's not confused. There can be 500 of them, and he said, this one, I like this one, I want this one. Uh -uh. He will come after you. He will come, he's you, you will be tired, you will be running. He will come after you. My point is, when a guy sees who he wants to get married to, he's very clear about it. So if he's avoiding the conversation about marriage, that is a red flag. You bring it up, he deflects it, he tells you one thing, he tells you, let's still see how it's going, let's still see how it's going. Maybe by the end of next three years. Uh -uh. And in your mind, next three years, what will I be doing with you till three years if we're not married? You know? You say so that we can do each other better. Which people that are, in fact, one of my my couple from the Single and Ready Club, um, they met something like May or June, twenty twenty, by March March thirty first or early April. They were married. When people who know exactly what they are looking for meet themselves, right, and the values align. You see, you don't need. You don't need five years to say, let us, let us know ourselves. Throughout the marriage, you'll still be learning about yourselves. Hey, great flow, seven, I see you. Great to have you around. Um, Dami, a follow lady, Uyi, John. There yeah, are a number of guys I didn't hear. Let me hear all of you. Tega, yes, I, I see you. All right? Yeah, so if he's deferring the conversation about marriage, he does not want to get married to you. Please, he doesn't. And it's not because of you. He hasn't gotten to that place in his mind or in his life yet where marriage is the next thing he's thinking of. Or even if he has gotten there, you are not the type that he wants to marry. Don't be offended. Do you understand? You can't, you, you can't be with someone who is tolerating or managing you. Your value is far more priceless than that. Do you understand? You're far more valuable. So don't be with somebody who is just managing you or who is just trying to string you along and say, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm like I'm doing you a favor by uh, by having you in my life. Uh, you have to wait for me when I'm whenever I'm ready. No, 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 no. If within your own plans, this person is not speaking the same language, he's not willing to commit to you with a definite time, very soon for marriage, then he doesn't want to get married to you. All right. You are with somebody for six months. Come on, six months. Marriage conversation has not come up. Six months. That's actually a lot. Oh, six months doesn't come up. Ha. 
No, you should ask question now. You should you should you should find a way to bring it out. Alright? Now you know the conversation I'm having with you people is and I'm not talking about 16 year old children that want to have boyfriend and girlfriend. You know that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about small children that are still in school that are looking for boyfriend and girlfriend. That is not what I'm talking about. You know when I'm talking relationship, I'm talking about with the intent of marriage. That that is that is the premise on which I do my relationship teachings and counseling and coaching and all of that. On the premise of marriage. Alright, so on interpret it from that lens. I just thought to put that there so that somebody is not asking me, ah, but I just want to have fun. Why, should, why must I be talking about my... No, no, if you want to have fun, you're not for my class. Uh, so people call me like that too. Hey, my boyfriend is, you know, I broke, he broke up with me, okay, but two weeks time, he's not coming back, but me, I'm already dating another boy in my department that I really like. No, it's not in my department, he's in the other faculty. I really like him. When you start bringing that kind of gist to me, you say for counseling, I will clear you once that, eh, hey, wait, wait. Where do you say you are? University? What level? 200 level? Eh? What are you doing? I, I don't have counsel for that kind of thing. What I'll tell you is leave that thing and focus on your books. I'm sorry, I'm that, I'm that. It's me, do you understand? That's my own position. Leave relationship and focus on your book and know where you're even going with yourself. Why are you following man up and down or following woman up and down? You know, some people slide into my DM and tell me, I just tell them, sorry, I'm the wrong person. Don't ask me boyfriend, girlfriend question. I don't have answer for you. I'm talking about people that want to marry. <laughs> if you want to marry, let's talk. All right? So, if it's marriage you're talking about, if you are ready for marriage by age, by maturity, you know, you're not, you're not a child. You're not just one new, uh, um, you're, not, you're, not, you're not a teenager. You're not one new adult at just 18, 19. No, no, you're ready to get married. All right? Then you should look out for these things I'm talking about. He should be able to bring up the marriage conversation. He should. And if he doesn't bring it up, he shouldn't run away from it when you bring it up. But if in six months you are in a relationship you consider serious with someone and he hasn't said, he hasn't dropped hints about marriage, he hasn't asked you some kind of questions that shows that he's checking you out for the long term. You know, you guys are just enjoying yourselves. You know, you just chop popcorn, chop ice cream. You know, you're just having fun. We go to the movies, we hang out. And to receive sense, all right. Let the Lord deliver you from wasting your time, all right. So much for that. Um, I, I mentioned two things. The first one is he, he he's not defining the relationship. The second one is that he avoids the marriage conversation. Um, did I talk about secret keeping a relationship a secret last week? It seems I talked about it. Let me jump that point. Um, let me jump that point and talk about. Oh, this is another one. This is another one. Are you ready for it? He wants to marry you urgently. He wants to marry you now. As I saw you now. I just know. Something just told me this is your wife. I know she's the one. Let's go and marry next three weeks. Ha. It's true I've been praying for husband, but uh, <laughs> uh, let us discuss some more. Urgency. Urgency is a major red flag. In financial dealings, in investment decisions, in your purchasing decisions, and of course, in your marital decisions. Urgency is a major red flag. It's a major red flag. As a matter of fact, you should turn down certain deals because of the kind of urgency and pressure that those deals are bringing to you. You, sh you should let them go. Just, it's okay, it's okay, let it pass. No verse. No verse. Urgency. You see that thing? That's what happened to uh, Keno. That's how he sold birthright. Urgency because of hunger. Give me now, 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 now. They say, I will give you, but give me your birthright. I was birthright. Take now. Yeah, give me food. You don't make life impacting decisions in a hurry. You don't make them under duress. No. So a guy comes, shows up. He looks like everything you have been praying for. And tells you he wants to marry you now. Uh -uh. When will be the time for you to find out the basic things you want to find out about this person? When do you want to know what his values are? When do you want to know what he believes in spiritually, you know, um, his spiritual stance? When do you want to know what they are? When do you want to know what his character is like? When do you want to find out who his friends are, who his friends are, the people he ha hangs out with, the people he talks to a lot? When do you want to find that out? All right? When do you even want to know about his family? Important things you need to talk about. 
When do you want to know about his plans? You need to talk about these things. How do you know he has not been married before? How do you know he's not even currently married now? How do you know he's not marrying you because he wants to apply for one visa and he needs to apply as a married person? How do you know? So, watch out for urgency. Let me read a comment here. Manti says, urgency is actually a major red flag because I fell for it. Oh my. And suffered years of abuse. I'm so sorry about that. Thank God you're able to talk about it now. Urgency. No, no, no. Let's marry, marry. And then, and then they go and bully every other person in your life. Maybe they have money. Oh, Quinesta says, same here. You see, these are real stuff. I'm glad. Thank you guys for, you know, um, you know, um, what's the word now? Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I forgot the word out that he Okay, but thank you for sharing. Thank you for, for mentioning it, for validating what I'm saying. You know, urgency is a major red flag. It's a major one. Sometimes what they do is they just come, maybe they come with a lot of influence or come with a lot of money. Before you know, they are bought over your father, bought over your mother, bought over your siblings. You know, they are impressing them. Very impressive behavior. Very impressive. Spotless. In fact, the other day, um, I had Reverend Chima Chamber on the live and he said something very significant. He said the only thing that is too good to be true is the gospel message of Christ. That's the only thing that is too good to be true. When your relationship just comes and everything is just... Ah, just ah, feel free to step on the brakes, observe, ask questions, seek counsel, all right? Don't just be carried away by the euphoria of the moment. No, don't be carried away. So when he comes so urgently like that, and then he has bought over your past. Now, you see one thing with people who are manipulative. They know how to have their way with everyone around you just to get to you. They know how to have their way. They're very good at it. You allow them to talk to your father. Ah, your father is going to fall in love with them. Ah, ah. They talk to your mother. Ah, ah. She's going to start calling him in-law. You know, I think I made reference to this Bolanle story one time. Um, one old comedy, those days. Bolanle, fine, fine lady, Bolanle. I don't know if you remember that thing. I mean, those who are of a particular age grade, right? Um, and then it got to a part where the guy said, um, he wrote a love letter to Bolanle. Bolanle read it and left it in her jean pocket. House girl was washing the jeans now. She saw the letter, read it, and house girl fell in love too with this Bolanle's toaster. House girl now went to report to send it to Bolanle's sister. Say, see, oh, see what lover boy said. Bolanle's sister read the love letter self and fell in love. Sister say, hey, let me tell mommy what Bolanle is doing. No. Mommy read the letter. Hey, I fell in love. Now, it's only Bolanle's father now that's carrying God looking for this man up and down because my full family now, they, they don't fall in love. <laughs> All right? Now, that's what the manipulator can do. He can get everyone around your space to trip for him and endorse him. In a very short time. Now, let's marry immediately. As I saw you, I know you are the one. Well done, sir. You have this kind of knowing sins and it did not work for any other person in your life so far. It's now that you're activating this knowing because you saw me. Okay, calm down. If you didn't see me, uncle, just calm down. Calm down without urgency. It needs to calm down. Many times there is a reason behind that urgency. There is something that they quickly need you to get in their lives for, to show that they are married, so that they can assess certain things. I mean, for those who are in the ministry space, there are certain ministries that will not ordain you or will not give you um, your own church to pastor if you're not yet married. For some ministries, there's a policy like that. So guess what? Somebody sees that ordination is in the next five months. Ah, and I'm supposed to be eligible, but I never marry. Hey, I must marry in the next three months so that my name will enter that list. And then you go and look for one girl, you're confused, you're confused. You're, let's marry now. You are the one. You marry, he gets his ordination, he gets the next thing you... Live inside the house with him and you just discover that it's like you're living with a beast. Many times there's always a reason for that urgency. Okay, and you want to be able to find that out first. Someone says it's because I'm traveling out urgently, so let's just... Let, see, see, eh? Calm down, calm down. Don't make life decisions in a hurry. Ask Cain. Don't do that. You could regret it for the rest of your life. And two people here have shared how that, you know, they can connect with exactly what I'm saying. So let me leave that point for now. Let me jump to... Um, oh, there's a story I was supposed to share. There's a story I shared in my book. Uh, okay, let me just share this story before I jump to the red flags in the lady. Okay, so yeah, there was this young guy who met a lady and he wanted to marry her urgently. Why? Because... Um, there was this gig in his office. It was going to be an international posting. 
And some of those international postings come with a lot of perks, especially if you're married. It's such that, I mean, the office is going to take care of your relocation, you and your family, stuff like that. And if you're not married, come on, it's like that opportunity is just wasting, you know. So you need to just maximize it. And this thing is happening very soon, so you want to quickly get married. So he met this girl, and thank God she's someone who has listened to teachings. I'm telling you a story, a real story. It's in the book. Thank God she's someone who has listened to teachings. And she wasn't comfortable. She just kind of told the guy, you know what, yeah, yeah, everything good, but I'm not comfortable with this um, horrid um, wedding. And then so she left him. Well, of course, the guy man had a plan, went out, looked for any other person, got another lady who did not mind, and then they got married. Um, so now he's supposed to go for that international posting. And then COVID struck. And you know what happened when COVID struck? First things first, international borders started closing up. With time, some companies started laying off massively. Long and short was borders were closed. Gaiman could not travel. So what was the point? He just got married so that we could travel together and I can, I can get this opportunity and we travel. But now we're not traveling. And then, you know what happened during COVID? People are stuck with each other in the same house. You go nowhere. At best, you go and stroll around in the morning and you come back to the house. You're not going to work. You're not going to market. You are stuck in the house. You know, and suddenly these guys started discovering that this thing couldn't work. Or their differences were shouting. Differences were just too much. Of course, it started resenting. I started taking out the whole frustration on the lady. You know, just started, and everything just went south. And the marriage didn't see the light, the light, light of day. Why? Because of that urgency, they didn't take time to actually interact and find out their character. And find out if they're compatible and find out what they really believe in and please let me say this again ladies don't get married to a guy just because of anything external don't get married to him just because he has a good job don't get married to him just because he's a cute guy don't get married to him just because it looks like he ticks all your external boxes no don't do that people are regretting every day getting married to cute demons don't do that all right the stories are everywhere. You know, I, I, I try to avoid these doom stories because I don't want to be promoting some of those things. But, I mean, you hear the stories, you read them. Do you understand? People are running for their lives every day from, 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 from what was supposed to be a marriage. Okay? So, please, don't get yourself stuck in that. Let me touch one or two red flags in a lady and then... Um, <laughs> and then I will talk about something else with the remaining time. So one of the red flags I talked about for a lady is a lady who is overly jealous and controlling. Have you met a jealous lady before? Of course, so we have guys like that too, right? But now I'm talking about ladies. So I've shredded the guys for a bit. Now I'm talking about the ladies. So don't come for me. Have you met an overly jealous lady before? She wants to know everything. She wants to know why you're talking to this person, who this person is. Why did you talk with this one longer than you spoke with that one? Why? You know, she is monitoring your life very actively and interpreting everything as though, um, as though you're not being genuine with her. You have other friends that you really enjoy their company. She's wondering, why, why is it not me? And then before you know, she begins to give you the kind of body language and the kind of attitude that makes you begin to cut off from your real guys, from your genuine friendships, just because you're trying to please her. And this is one thing that people need to take note of. Um, in your relationship, you really need to ask yourself, who am I becoming in this relationship? Because the truth is, your relationship will impact you. It will change you. All right. If you are, if you are, if you are really getting into that, if you're really committed to that relationship, it will impact on you. It will change you. All right. But what is this change? Are you becoming a better person? Are you becoming a better person? This you that you are becoming in this your relationship, is it helping you to be a better version of yourself? Is it helping you to have more wholesome relationships with other people? Is it helping you to become that person that that is that 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 you know is 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 of a commendable character? Or are you finding yourself now doing certain things or tending in a direction that people who have known you all this while will be like, "Oh God, you're changing," or like you used to be better than this. Like, what's going on? 
what is your relationship making you to become you need to answer that question because if the relationship is making you to become someone that is completely different from the values you have always represented from that you that people enjoy and want to hang around suddenly because you're dating this girl now nobody wants to come around your space ah a girlfriend goes soon come i beg go make i don't want trouble hey okay bye 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 uh, you know and then before you know everybody's excusing you because you have one toxic person around you that will give them attitude i'll talk to them anyhow and they'll be looking at you like can't you defend me can't you defend me are you going to stay here and watch them and, you know come on so watch out for that you see a lady with that kind of attitude she definitely has a lot of issues that need to be dealt with a lot of issues from her past a lot of issues from upbringing a lot of issues from previous relationships and experiences that need to be dealt with and most importantly issues with self-esteem also okay and guess what young man it is not you that will solve it it's not you you see how we used to tell the ladies that when you meet an abuser when you meet a narcissistic man when you meet uh, a manipulator it's not you that will change him okay it's the same vein now okay it is not you that will change this girl because you see that problem it goes it goes really deep and if she's not able to get to the point where she sees that she needs to transform, she's inspired enough to know that I need to do better, then there's nothing you can do. You're not the one who will change her. I hope somebody understands what I'm saying. So you meet somebody who displays a lot of jealousy, you know, um, always questioning anything you're doing because she feels like there's somebody else there you're talking to, you know, cannot trust you, cannot, tr you know. Come on. You see that thing people do with, um, um, uh, I'm talking to you now and then I'm like, okay, who is there? Uh, put the phone of uh, video. Uh, I want to see your environment. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Especially when I'm not giving you any reasons to be concerned. Oh, God, it's a red flag. All right? Because many times people project their own insecurities, their own um, proclivities, their own tendencies. They, they project it on you. Yeah, many times that's what they do. Okay, they are the ones with insecurities. They are the ones with the no trust, you know, with the uh, trust issues. They are the ones who would most likely take an opportunity if they see it, you know. They are the ones who would do that. But what happens? They are beginning to project that on you, you know, and it wears you out. Ladies don't know how this thing wears out a guy. All right, so please take note, young man. You see a lady who has that jealousy thing, it's not you that will solve that problem. Well, please recommend her to therapy and then be be looking for somebody else first let her go and get well and come back because trust me you cannot enjoy marriage with a jealous lady you cannot you can't you cannot of course you know same thing guys can be like that but right now i'm talking about ladies okay um and so that jealousy goes with a desire to control and to manipulate you to monitor you also all right can i give examples enough i can't you know um do you see those videos uh-huh do you see those videos on instagram where um a guy is working with his girlfriend um another lady is coming <laughs> from the opposite direction uh maybe her bag falls he picks it up and gives to her and then the girlfriend goes oh wow see and i'm picking bags for random girls oh wow then she drops her own bag so that he will pick it up and then he spends the next week or the next month or the next rest of his life you know picking up her bag because she wants to make sure that this thing that you did for that girl you must be doing it for me i'm sure you see some of those kind of videos or maybe he extends a courtesy to another lady and then he's working with his girlfriend the girlfriend is like what you're working with me are you extending the courtesy to another lady what kind of behavior is that and then she starts giving him attitude see listen that those are some of the examples of that that negative and that toxic behavior in a lady that you don't want to deal with all right yeah why should you lose courtesies because you have a girlfriend why can't you genuinely interact with people because you have a girlfriend why can't you talk with people why can't you be friends with people because you have a girlfriend why why do you understand why can't you have genuine friends because you don't have a girlfriend come on why should you cut off your communication with other people because you have a girlfriend if you're the one dating that kind of person, no matter how beautiful she is, no matter how whatever it is you're benefiting from that relationship, please, eventually, it will, it, will, it will harm you, it will hurt you so bad that sometimes it can even make the guy to switch and start becoming an abusive person. All right? So um, let me leave that point there and let me touch another red flag in a lady. Um, this, one, uh, this one happens a lot. Um, this red flag is, hey, Cherish, I see you. I don't mean I see you. You're welcome. All right? Now, this red flag is, if she's more interested in your wallet than in your prospects, <laughs> it's a red flag. Mm. It's a red flag. Now, there are ladies you meet today. 
And from today that you people meet, they've started placing demands. First of all, you people cannot meet in a place where you're not spending money. It has to be an eatery. It has to be a cinema. It has to be a shopping mall. It has to be a kind of outing that will involve money. They always have needs that are financial. They always want you to spend. They always want things that they cannot afford with their own money. They want you to fulfill their fantasies. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's not a wife material. Like I say, that's a knife. She's going to cut you. She's going to kill you. You're going to learn. <laughs> you know, you're going to learn. All right. If she's interested more in your wallet than in your prospects, that is a big red flag. You know, um, because the truth is a woman is a nurturer. She's supposed to be able to nurture your dreams and help you bring them to life. She's, a, she's supposed to come into your life and those things you thought were no longer possible, she begins to show you the possibilities. She begins to help you if you're a spendthrift. You know, she begins to help you coordinate your spending. She begins to help you have plans. She begins to help you have investments. She begins to help you, you know, cut off useless and unnecessary friends that, you know, are draining you or people that are just leeching onto you or people that are just leakages in your life. She's supposed to be able to do all of that, not become the leakage herself. But you see the problem with you guys because you have low self-esteem, because you think that it is by my wallet, nah, I take the man. Because she's making those demands and you can afford it, you feel proud. You feel like a hair hey, at uh, uh, spending the man. All right. And then you start spending anyhow. And then before you know it, um, you're getting close to your 40s and there is nothing useful you have done with your money besides enjoyment or spending on another girl. And then guess what? The moment you cannot afford to keep up with that level of spending, what do you think happens? <laughs> she bounces to the next guy because it's all about the money, money, money. Yeah, that's what it is. And that's why you have to be careful what, your, what, what the foundation of your relationship is. For those of you who think that you will impress her by spending, okay, no problem. But be ready to live the rest of your life spending. There are people who do that. You meet somebody the first time and you just think, oh, let me let me splash money around. Let me just, you know, oh, it's your birthday. You get a very expensive gift. Oh, congratulations. No problem. You are just meeting. And everything is still starting up. Oh, um, um, I'm hungry. Oh, come, let's go to you go to the fanciest restaurants, expensive restaurants. No problem. You know, you're already setting a foundation. You're coming to see her during the week. You're buying a lot of expensive things. Now, it's okay if you have a lot of money and you can afford these things. Do you understand? There's no problem there. If this is somebody you, you, you truly believe you want to spend the rest of your life with, yes, you should spend. But in a situation where this lady begins to place demands upon demands, upon demands, it is where you people started the relationship that she now told you that I change my hair every week. Before now, she has carried hair for uh, six months today's carry hair for six months i'm not sure <laughs> but you get what i'm saying right before now she has carried hair for six months she did not change it but now that uh uh got billions is in the corner oh now you want to change hair every every two weeks oh now you want to change nails every two weeks oh now you want to um uh, what are the things that you want to go to the fancy restaurants every time it's lunch time? You want to go and eat in a restaurant before you used to cook, before you manage 5,000 and cook soup and stew with egg. <laughs> All right, but now you want to go and chop fancy restaurant because you have a boyfriend. Boyfriend does not mean that this person should die spending money on your head. Though. All right, so guys, watch out for this, even if you have the money. But this lady is all about the money, trust me, you want to watch it. Because it will not stop anytime soon. But the big problem there is that when you are no longer able to meet up with that level of financial um, expectation, then that might just be the end of a relationship. In the course of the week, I was discussing with a dear friend and he was sharing how that, um, you know, a lady whom he had invested so much in and stuff like that, when things went south with business, lady tells him, hey, you know what? I don't do broke guys. And the guy is like, what? What are you telling me this? Me that raised you out of poverty? Me now that I'm broke, you're telling me you don't do poor boys? Really? Why? Because she was more interested in the money. In the money. Alright? Um, so that's a red flag, guys. That's a red flag. If she really loves you, what she'll be concerned with is securing the future with you financially. 
That's what she'll be more concerned about. Yes, it doesn't mean she doesn't want the good things of life. It doesn't mean she doesn't want some spending, some sweet treatment, some pampering here and there. But hey, she's checking. Do you have enough for tomorrow? If you finish this now, what will you do tomorrow? She's always checking. She wants to know, is there, is there financial security here? Am I going to be safe with this person? Would the children be safe with this person? She's checking your spending decisions. Would you rather buy a new television when school fees is almost set? I mean, every parent knows that when it's September, there's how your chest used to do you, you know, if you have that kind of educational system where school fees are paid in September. You know, it's a new time, it's a new session. Yes, how body will be doing you. You prepare for it. Then somebody sees one lovely vehicle. He has not paid school fees, but he's now he wants to clear the money in his account and borrow a little bit extra so that he can buy that fine car. And come on. It's a woman, a proper wife material, who will help such a person to be able to coordinate those desires or coordinate those indisciplines so that the home front is not suffering. The children are catered for. There's food in the house. There's financial security. You know, if you lose your job now, we won't be stranded in the next six months or, you know, till something else comes. A virtuous woman will help him achieve that. But guess what? If she's all about the money, what she wants is, whoa, salary is out. Oh, yeah, let's flex all night. Let's go to the club. Let's go shopping. Let's travel. Let's travel business class. Let's, you know, vacations. You know, she wants all of that experience. All right. If that is the kind of person you're dating, huh? Okay. Before long, you will have problems. Because if you cannot meet up, definitely she's moving out to the next person who can spend money. Because for her, it's all about the money. Now, let me take a break there. Let me stop there for a bit. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I said, these conversations, we cannot exhaust them. Okay. All these things I'll share are from my book, Relationship Red Flags. Um, so, um, of course, you know, I'm not going to share everything in the book. So, still, still buy the book. Uh -huh, still buy it. Because if I share everything now, you tell me I'll finish telling you everything in the book. Now, why should you go and buy it? Uh, brother, sister, please go and buy it. Eh? Encourage your brother. All right. Yeah, go and get your copy. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Seller. You can get it on my website. You know, and I have a number of other books and courses and lovely materials that can do you good. All right. So, let me just stop there for now. We'll continue this conversation next week. And then um, we'll have our banter session on um the 29th i think that's the last wednesday and yeah 29th in, for this month all right now um for those of you who are in the city of abuja tomorrow i'm going to be having a session with um church of god mission the grace place um we call it bottom line that's what that's what we call um the name for our relationship or meetings or special meetings all right that are not typical word teaching meetings okay so we're going to be talking love we're going to be talking relationship here in the city of abuja Please join me up. Um, this 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 session is happening at um, the Novari Mall at Wuse Two. Okay, um, I'll put the details on my handle. In fact, the details are already on my handle. So after this session, you can check it out. We're going to be talking about love. All right. In fact, what we're talking about is love is not enough. And then I cancel the not. I say love is enough. All right. So, I mean, is love really enough? What do you think? Is love not enough? What do you think? All right. It's a very interesting conversation because, you know, um, I mean, you've heard different sides of it. Um, but the real question there is what is love? Do you understand? What really is love? Okay. If, if you know what love really is, then are you saying that that is not enough to keep a marriage? All right. But if you don't know what love really is and you're interpreting some other things at love, and yeah, you will have a problem saying that, I oh, know it cannot keep a marriage. Oh, do you understand? So those are the things we want to talk about tomorrow. So if you're in Abuja, do well to join us um, at um, um, the Grace Place. Um, the midweek services hold at the Novari Mall in Wuse too. Um, you can come over there and, and let's, let's, let's share together. And it promises to be wonderful. Um, after that, um, I'll have some conversation around Benin City on the 25th. Okay, I'll give you more details about that. And then after that, I'll be in Lagos. Okay, um, I'll give you guys more details about that. So please do well to follow, do well to share, do well to um, support the work, um, do well to buy our materials, very importantly. Okay, do well to refer people or you come for counseling, all right? Come for counseling, come for relationship coaching. You don't need to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend um, to start preparing for marriage. No, you don't need to. You don't need to, all right? So there's such a thing called premarital coaching. You want to just come and start learning, start preparing yourself ahead of time. It's very important. It will help you, all right? You're already in a relationship with someone. You guys are getting ready for marriage. Come, let's talk counseling. Let's, let's talk, you know, how to prepare you for for, for marriage, not just for the wedding, okay, because that's a lot of big deal, all right, that's big deal, see, huh? 
when I started this thing, I tried to stay away from doing marital issues because marital issues is where the real pay is. Do you understand that? Because there are always issues in marriage. When people don't come for, when people don't build capacity, don't learn, don't prepare, they will gonna have problem. Then they will not come and pay us heavily, okay? Because um, find out, um, we charge. Uh -huh. Do you understand? We charge well. All right. But there's a reason I chose to stay with premarital coaching so that you don't need to get in and start experiencing all of this wahala. You can actually learn before you get in. You can actually be prepared. You can actually be equipped for marriage. Because even with all the preparation, you will still have some challenges. Yes, because both of you are different people. It may take you guys a bit to catch up. It may take you guys a bit to really, you know, humble yourselves enough so that you can learn. You know, it might take you guys a bit. Do you understand? So even with all the preparation, yeah, there might still be some challenge there. How much worse if you don't even take time to learn? Do you get it? So please, all right, um, you don't need to be in a relationship uh, before you are learning about marriage. So long as you're an adult, you need to start thinking about marriage, especially if you plan to get married. There are people who don't want to get married. No problem. I'm not coming for you yet. All right. Um, it's your choice, your decision. But if you know someone in your mind, you plan to get married, you desire to get married. What are you waiting for? Come and start learning about it already. Okay, someone is sending me a request to join my life, but the session is already about to be over. It's already my time. Okay, so perfect muse. I don't know if you really want to join the live, but if you want to, then plan to be around next week, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Nigerian time, and I'll be glad to bring you in on the live. All right, but if that was just a mistake request, then that's okay. Um, don't forget, guys, you want to reach out to me, drop me a message in the DM. Um, if you have my WhatsApp details, drop a message. Do you understand? Um, a number of people are joining now that we're closing. I mean, you guys have missed a lot. All right. So maybe you should watch the conversation because it's always posted here on my handle and on Single and Ready Club handle. It's also posted on YouTube. Okay. So please do well to watch the conversation. Hey, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Do well to watch this conversation. Do well to share it also. There's a lot of learning. See, with learning, we can do better. That's the truth. With learning, you may identify those areas of your life where you are struggling. You might identify those areas of your weakness and choose to um, and choose to to improve. Because at the end of the day, it's ultimately you who should decide to be a better person. Ultimately, it's you. Decide to be a better person. Um, the real marriage system. Okay, you just saw the notification. Thank you for jumping in. Yeah, please, we'll do this again um next week so please you can come early nine o'clock we'll start do you understand okay so why you need to do this to expose yourself to these conversations because you might find something that will really strike you that will really address that area of your vulnerability or that area of your emotional need or that area that you have not been able to open up to anybody all right when you find that don't run away from it don't further shield that dark part of you no open yourself up so that light can come in so that insight can come in you know so that wisdom can come in and so that your life can be transformed no matter how terrible you are if you decide to get better if you decide to be transformed you can get transformed all right so please um that'll be all for today i call it the day right now um it's still on this book relationship red flags you want to get yours you can go on amazon get it you can go on my website coachmazy.com to get it you can go on seller um s-e-l-a-r.com all right or the ceo i can remember and type chimizy on forum and you'll find my materials there they'll come up or better still, you can check the link in my bio and you will see my access to my different resources and you can get it. All right. So that'll be all for now. God bless you guys. See you again next week. Till then, please keep building capacity. Keep improving yourself. Keep being a more lovable person. Keep being a sweet fellow. Keep being that, that, that version of you that you desire to enjoy in your spouse. All right. You develop all of those qualities. You want to have a great spouse, start becoming a great person. All right. So that you can attract the one that resembles you. All right. God bless you guys. See you. And that will be all for today.